Well, good day to you. It is St. Patty's Day, March the 17th, 2021. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Hopefully you're wearing green. And if you decide to go out and drink tonight, uh, of course, when you start the evening, that's pretty much all you'll see is green because everyone else is going to be wearing green. And if you continue to drink to the wee hours of the morning and then try to drive home, the colors that you might start to see are more blue and red. (laughs) So you don't want to drink and drive. That's the... uh, the moral of the story of that one. Now, um, if you have listening to this on some other day than uh, St. Patty's Day, I want to wish you a great day as well whenever you're listening to this video. But if this is your first time ever listening to Search for Signs, I want to welcome you. I want to thank you to and, and kind of give you a brief introduction about who I am and what we talk about here. My name is Gary Willing, and what we talk about here is we talk about the emergence of Maitreya, the Masters of Wisdom. We talk about why are the masters returning now to the everyday world? Why is it so important that they do so? And what does it mean for everyone? That is really what we talk about, as they say, in a nutshell. Now, most videos are kind of centered around the question and answer portion of, of that topic that we talk about, the emergence of Maitreya. And most questions that come my way are religious and base because who and what I believe Maitreya is, this is the one awaited by all the world's religions. Every religion is awaiting their teacher to come back at some point. I do think that that help is already here. He's been speaking on TV for 10 years, not claiming to be the Lord of love, awaited by all the world's religions, just presenting himself as an ordinary person who's deeply, deeply, deeply concerned about the problems that are facing humanity. But it's not important to really listen or change your view on things. I'm not trying to change your religious view or if you're not a religious person, try to get you to be more spiritual, religious. But it's more important to look at really the two most important things that we talk about on this channel. The first one is the miracle signs that have been going on for decades. That's why I named this channel Search for Signs is because these miracles are going on all over the world in all walks of life and have been for decades. In a world that is deeply divided, deeply troubled, deeply violent even, you know, these miracles are going on and they're giving those people who are experiencing it hope. And so there are evidence of hope, but it's also evidence that we are one because they're happening to all the different religious groups and they're also happening to people of no religious faith. And they're happening in the Middle East, they're happening in Africa, they're happening in the United States, around the world, Russia, Austria, I mean, it's happening everywhere, really without exception. So it is evidence that we are one. Now, the other thing that we talk about is the problems that are facing humanity today and the teacher's solution to those problems. And that we really need to start looking at his solutions as really simple yet a very highly effective ways of tackling those problems, right? So, but it boils down to, just like I said about miracles, that those are evidence that we are one. The problems of the world are really evidence that we are one too on a diff- on the other side of the coin because it's evidence that we need to start tackling these problems together as one people. And if we don't, our lives, all of them, could be in jeopardy. So let me put it like, let me talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so the teacher says that really peace is a necessity. Our very survival depends on whether we as a people can create peace on this little planet called Earth. The way he says that we can do it, the only way that we can do it, there's no other possibility of creating peace, is without sharing, there could be no justice. Without justice, there could be no peace. And without peace, there could be no future. Now, if you really reverse engineer it, I do think that the first step that humanity is going to have to come to realize is that peace is a necessity and our future is dependent upon whether we create peace. That's going to be something that every one of us are going to have to come to the realization of. And then once that truth sets in, because the teacher on TV is going to start to awaken that truth in the hearts of all of us, that we have to create peace and we have to start living as one. But if you really looked at it, okay, we can't go from the way that we're living today 
deeply divided, deeply separate, thinking that we're separate, really. You know, thinking that what happens on the other side of the world doesn't affect me. So if somebody dies of hunger in Africa or Asia or something like this, or even across the street, you know, that won't affect me. Or, you know, what I do doesn't affect them and so forth. You know what I mean? We can't go from the way we're living like this to living truer to who we are as one family. There's got to be something that gets us there. You know, as they say, the saying goes, you know, uh, what's the rubber that meets the road? Well, that rubber that meets a road is really the principle of sharing. And, but humanity must realize that, like I said, I mean, that their survival is going to be dependent upon whether we do this or not before we start to do it. Now, as the teacher says, without uh, peace, there could be no future. I do think that there's two reasons why that's true. The first one is militarily. Okay, there are a lot of countries with nuclear weapons. Even a country that doesn't have a nuclear weapon could, uh, you know, create a battle or a skirmish between another country that does have a nuclear weapon and then that country uses it on them or whatever. I mean, it's always a possibility. Anytime you are living in a world that doesn't have peace, true peace and goodwill amongst the nations, there's always going to be that possibility that we could go to war with one another and it could end all life on this planet. It's a possibility. But the other possibility that's, I think, more likely but less understood is when coming with the problem of the environment and coming to grips with the fact that humanity must come together as one people to tackle that problem. You can't have just one or two nations trying to, trying to solve the problems on their own. It's got to be everyone together. And the only reason why nations would ever even bother to do it together is there's got to be trust and goodwill amongst these nations. Now, you might be someone who's in a deep denial about, let's say, climate change, because that's pretty much the only focus of the environment right now is climate change. Now, I'm not going to debate with you whether, you whether it's true or not or whatever. You know, I, I do think there's truth to climate change and the danger thereof. But the teacher will tell you, actually, that the biggest problem with the environment is not so much climate change, it's pollution. Air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution. Those are, that's really what's killing humanity off. And we have, to do, we have to do something about it before it's too late and we start to kill the whole environment out and then starts to kill everyone. You know, and then we pretty much just wipe out all life on this planet. We have to do something about it and we have to do it together. You know, so if you're in denial about climate change, <clears throat> you know, I, I challenge you to look at the pollution situation. Look at the quality of the air. Just go up on a hill in any major city and in, in wherever you're living and look at the air quality and the ozone and see if... You can't see the pollution. That's what you're breathing in on a daily basis. You know, I can at least attest to that in here in Atlanta. If you don't see that and you don't believe that, well, then I challenge you to go grab a jug or something out of your cupboard and go to the nearest stream and pull some water out of that and take a big swig out of that and see what happens then. You're going to get sick, and it's because of the pollution. So if the air is poisoned, if the water's polluted, what's it doing to the soil where we're growing all our food? We're eating that pollution, you know what I mean? And, it, and so we have to do something about this. And that's why I do think, along with Maitreya, the, the world teacher, that we have to create peace. We have to create justice amongst these nations and, and trust amongst these nations in order to tackle that problem. But the only way to get there is the first step, which is the principle of sharing. So again, I'm going to loop back around to it. If you don't want to talk about religion and when in regards to the story that is fine that's actually better for me I, I would rather not talk about religion so you know ask other questions that aren't religious and base you know what i mean but if you are deeply religious and you don't like what i say at all about who and what i think my tray is don't focus on that focus on the problems because guess what you know if you're an atheist or you're agnostic or an esotericist, you're going to have to work with the Christians or the Muslims or the Buddhists or the Jewish folks around the world in order to tackle the problems in the environment. We have to do it together. And it's time for us to stop looking at life as either you agree with what I say or not. And that's why I always present this information for you just to consider for yourself. I'm not trying to change your religious view. 
you know, but I'm not going to let you change my view on things either. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and you can sit there and argue with me ad nauseum about how wrong I am. It doesn't mean anything to me. And even if I am wrong, I know I'm right about the environment. I know we have to two of this together. That is the most important thing. Now, let's look at the principle of sharing and, and really look at, see if it can actually bring us to peace like the teacher suggesting, okay? Like you said, he says, without sharing, there could be no justice. Without justice, there could be no peace. Without peace, there could be no future. Couldn't be simpler, right? We make it so hard for ourselves to, to come up with solutions to our problems. I mean, it's a pretty simple solution. So if, you, if, if the teacher's solution to the greatest problem that is facing humanity is that simple, imagine how simple his solutions will be for everything else, right? So now let's look at historically and see if this is true, okay? So... The question on the table is, does the principle of sharing really bring about peace? If you look historically, it did. And the most capitalistic country on the planet, most militarily violent uh, country on the planet, really, too, was the one that actually instituted the principle of sharing. It happened for a brief amount of time. It ended about 75 years ago, but the results are quite astounding. Now, it's called the Marshall Plan, and the United States, under the then-President Truman, devised a plan to give aid to Europe in a very unique way. They did it by tallying up all the resources that were just kind of sitting there in the country and gave it freely to Europe to help Europe out to rebuild Western Europe. It did just that, and it did it rather quickly. And then the European people were able to get back on their feet. They started to manufacture things on their own. And then they had excesses that they gave back to the United States in payment. Now, here's the thing that most historians fail to realize. And I would be willing to bet you that if we could go back in time and talk to General George C. Marshall, the Secretary of State, who was the one that devised this plan, of his result of his endeavor, he would probably say that there's no truth in this either, right? But... It created a peaceful, trusting, goodwill relationship amongst those nations that participated in the uh, Marshall Plan 75 years after it ended. So it happened for a brief amount of time. It had immediate effects that were positive, but the long-term effects were nothing less than miraculous because it created a peaceful, trusting relationship amongst these nations that, that did it. Now, here's, what, here's the other question I want to pose to you. So it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian, Muslim, Hindu, from the Philippines, from India, from Russia, from the United States. I want us all to just sit here for a second. If you've listened to this video this far, just take a second to do this for me, will you? Close your eyes and, and, and think about this. If, if the Marshall Plan that ended 75 years ago is still creating peace, a peaceful, trusting relationship amongst those nations today, even though they haven't done it in 75 years. What will the world look like if we do take Maitreya's advice and do this globally and have every nation participate in on this and do it ongoingly? What will, world, what will the world look like 75 years from now? Now, Again, swinging back to the to the religious and the Christian uh, the and the comments and the religious questions and so forth, people love to quote the Bible about how wrong I am about who and what I think Maitreya is, and that's fine. That's their right, and it doesn't bother me and it doesn't doesn't ruffle my feathers whatsoever. Okay, but not one Christian fundamentalist who's ever commented on my channel has ever, 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 ever quoted, I think, probably hands down the single greatest teaching that Jesus gave to humanity, which was talking about the law of cause and effect. There were three things that Jesus said about the law of cause and effect that come to mind. The first one is, those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. Law of cause and effect, quite simple. What you sow shall, shall you reap, another one. But the other one, too, is a tree is known by its fruit. So simple, so simple. You can't plant an apple seed and get corn, right? He was talking to people who could understand this type of logic, right? We've, we have lost, I think those are the lost teachings of Jesus, is the teachings of the law of cause and effect, right? But the seeds that our world leaders are planting today, 
have not gotten us peace. It's brought instability, war, famine, injustice, political divisions, economic divisions, and war. And so much instability and and killing the environment off. And, And if they continue to plant those seeds, that if you were to imagine 75 years from now what the world's going to look like, it's going to look, if we're around to even, to even experience it, it's going to be really, really bad right, for everyone. So we, we should not be planting the same seeds because it's going to give us the same result. If the seeds of sharing that were planted one time for a very brief amount of time, 75 years ago, are still bringing about peaceful, trusting goodwill relationship amongst nations, even though they, they never planted any more seeds, you know, since then, I would say that the teacher is right. We need to start doing exactly that. We need to start sharing in order to create peace. Then in 75 years, we'll be living in a totally different world than we're living in today. So if you're the, the thing that this is pretty much a blanket statement for everyone who likes to try to bait me and goat me on about and the religious view on things. I could care less what you believe religiously. Believe me, right? But we have to look at creating peace together. Jesus talked about it. The Buddha talked about it. The prophet Muhammad talked about it. And the world teacher Maitreya is talking about it. We have to create peace. We have to. It is a necessity. And now is like no other. There's a time like no other. We have to start doing it. So anyway, now... I am going to segue into an article that one of these masters wrote uh, called, about the principle of sharing. And it's entitled, Sharing. <laughs> Couldn't be simpler, right? These masters look at, every life, look at life the simplest way. And there are, the way they articulate it, whether it's through music or art or through the, word, the spoken word or written word, very, very simple. And so simple that a lot of times it's missed by people. That's why I do think that Maitreya can be on TV right now, not claiming to be uh, the Lord of love awaited by all the world's religions, just presenting himself as an ordinary person. And so many people miss it because they, are, they speak so simply. But yet there's the, the universe of truth in every word that they utter, you know? And so... This master, whose name shall remain nameless until after uh, these masters start to get introduced by Maitreya, um, and then he'll be out known for who he is and all that kind of stuff, along with the master Jesus and the master who was Paul and so forth. But he worked tirelessly through uh, Benjamin Krem for decades while Benjamin Krem was alive. He helped him with his paintings. He helped him, you know, so a lot of the painting designs that Benjamin Cram came up with where he painted were coming from his master's inspiration. But also, the, one of the ways that this master got this information out was by writing these articles through Benjamin Cram and then having him published in Share International on a monthly basis. If there's any part of you that believes that this information could be true, even at a half a percent, I definitely recommend checking out the links in the description of this video and every video and going to the Share International website and reading this information for yourself, reading Benjamin Krem's master's articles for yourself and and internalizing it for yourself versus listening to it from someone who can barely read. (laughs) Uh, But right now, let me read this to you. We'll all suffer through it together, but hopefully we can get something out of this and a little bit more understanding about the principle of sharing and how important it is and how it's going to unfold over the not only the short term, the intermediate term, but also the long term. Because it will start to take on a different way in a connotation, I guess, as time goes on. In this coming age, mankind will evolve several methods of dealing with the problems involved in implementing the principle of sharing. Each stage in the unfoldment of this precious principle will bring man closer to his source. Gradually, a new humanity will be seen, manifesting more and more of its divine potential. In the first stage, redistribution will be the keynote. Each nation making available to the common pool those resources which it has beyond its needs. Through a sophisticated form of barter, 
The world's goods will be shared until such time as man's inner divinity awakens in him a desire for a simpler method of structuring his economic life. Then will follow the stage of emancipation of humanity from the drudgery of needless work. Machines will gradually take over from man the tasks of manufacture. All the artifacts of our daily lives will one day be created in this way. This will lead to a self-sufficiency unthinkable today. So great are the differences in development and resources among the nations. These machines will liberate man for the exploration of his own inner nature and guarantee his progress towards divinity. In time, these machines will be created by an act of will. By the power of his illumined mind, man will bring together an aggregate of forces and call into being these instruments and devices through which all his needs will be met. Then, that which is shared will be the resources and fruits of the Spirit. A creativity unlike aught seen before will transform men's lives. And in this new livingness and beauty, all will share. Thus will men demonstrate themselves as gods. All of this is conditional on man's right choices now. His ability to make the necessary sacrifices for the good of all. This achieved, the way is opened for the deliverance of man from those self-imposed limitations which now have him in thrall. From our point of view... These conditions are being met. Already, the signs are becoming apparent that humanity is daily growing in awareness that the time available in which to make the needed changes is short indeed. Before long, there will emerge a new sense of oneness, of belonging to one family of brothers and sisters. A new and better direction will fashion men's lives and together in growing harmony, the steps will be taken which will ensure their progress. A growing realization of man's destiny and purpose will carry him forward and enlighten his path. Thus, the stages of sharing will be implemented, expressing at each stage some further aspect of man's divine nature, revealing in ever-growing radiance the glory of that nature. Much there is to do in this coming time to seize the opportunities now being presented to humanity to evolve in an altogether heightened rhythm. Never before to evolve in an oh no sorry, never before in such potency have the energies been available for this. The time is thus unique. Unique also is the presence in your midst of the Prince of Peace, the Herald of the New Dawn and a growing number of his disciples. Under our wise guidance, man will come to realize his true stature and fulfill his destiny. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.